Well, the basic reason why I'm in uh, New York these days uh, is to try to have a good dialogue with the uh, UN ambassadors, with the Secretary General, and we've had some very fruitful conversations and meetings. You might think, well, but wouldn't there be plenty of time? Copenhagen is not coming up until tomorrow, seven months from, from tomorrow. But that is not quite how we see it. I think that the international climate negotiations is probably the most complicated piece of international negotiations right now. Not only the negotiations in themselves being as technical as they are, but also because it involves all kind of ministers in each government, from the head of state and prime minister, finance minister, development minister, energy minister, environment minister, and what have we. So in order to be ready to deliver what we are aiming for in Copenhagen this December, an ambitious and truly global deal, then the next few months will be absolutely crucial. Because prior to Copenhagen, the 192 governments must make up their minds and their positions. So for them to do so, they must know all the potential elements for an agreement. It has to be on the table. In the formal negotiations, things are progressing. Some of you might have heard of or even attended the COP14 in Poznan last December. And I think it's fair to say that the political atmosphere might not have been that good. But since, luckily, it has improved significantly. The willingness, the awareness that we are all going to deliver in December has increased a lot. Of course, it has also given momentum that a new American administration has set climate change and the U.S. to deliver on this topic that they have given it such a high priority. Still, I think that there are some crunch issues that requires a lot of attention right now. For instance, it is never so difficult for politicians to decide on long-term targets. When long-term target will be defined as 2050, that is 41 years from now when all politicians are out of office. But it's crucial that we also can come up with some midterm targets because we have to deliver on what science tells us is necessary. That is one of the crucial political issues. Another crucial issue will be to come up not only with financial mechanisms, but with truly additional financial means for adaptation purposes and for mitigation purposes. And my reading would be that only if the developed countries in good time prior to Copenhagen manage to be clear on the message that yes, they are going to deliver truly additional financing and financing that will not have to be pledged on an annual or biannual basis, but will also find some innovative financial mechanisms that only then we can expect, for instance, the developing countries to sort of engage even more in this because they can see that they have an interest and if they are going to mitigate or to take care of their adaptation challenges, they will get some assistance so that they can mainstream climate uh, resilient things into their development strategies and into their growth strategies. There I think that the parallel processes, like for instance, the major economist forum, the G8, and the Secretary General's meeting for heads of states here prior to the General Assembly on the 22nd of September, all these three meetings and rows of meetings will be rather crucial. Because we must start now to come into the phase where we are not talking in generalities, where we have specific output and specific messages on specific issues from the MEF process, from the G8 meeting this summer, this July, and also, I hope, from the event on the 22nd of September. As I started uh, to say, I had a very fruitful conversation with the Secretary General, 
and uh, uh, I very much on behalf of Denmark had advised him to take care that this event on the 22nd of September will not only be 192 leaders, each speaking for three minutes in general terms, but that they will be forced into the crunch issues and to come up with a very clear and strong signal from the political leaders to the negotiators prior to Copenhagen. So in that sense, I think that the event on the 22nd of September is very, very crucial. Maybe it will be the last chance for the leaders of this world to emphasize how important it is for the world to come together in Copenhagen this December. Uh, my final point just for this brief introduction is, should be that um, some would argue, okay, if not Copenhagen, maybe then why not later? Is it so important that we close an ambitious deal now? I would say that it's r rather seldom that the world gets such a window of opportunity where we all back in Bali 2007 set a common deadline and the deadline was Copenhagen 2009. And one should take very much care if you sort of go over this deadline, you never know when you will get the chance again. And again, as science tells us that the time is running out, science is even worse these days than it was when the IPCC came out with their assessment report two years back. We must come together, and the longer we postpone action, the more expensive it's going to be, and the more climate change in the end is going to harm the most vulnerable countries. That is why it is so urgent and imperative that we come together and make the deal in Copenhagen 2009.